this right here. This is a picture of the nigga she let around her kids. Now, this is after he done had his ass whooped, apparently. And this says it's a photo of an assault victim. Um, Mr. Darian Vince, who is Malia's stepfather, stated he was unconscious for almost 24 hours. So apparently he says that he was beaten by the people who came and stole his uh, children from him. Quinnell X and Bowens alleged that they have security footage from neighboring um, apartments that shows Vance walking in and out of their apartment with multiple bottles of bleach later. Wow, he had been, no, my God. Jesus Christ. Before I get into this, let's go ahead and just let me press a play on this. Cause... Got to think fast because, you know, I'm Judge Judy said you got to think fast. And damn it, you do. Four year old Malaya has been missing for a week. Oh, Malia has been missing for a week. And now the community active Quinnell X is speaking out with Malia's mom, Brittany Bowens. And we begin with major developments in the search for Malia Davis. Her mother is now out with some new allegations against Malia's stepfather. That's right. Let's go right now to Fox 26's Ivory Hacker. She's live in Southwest Houston tonight with these new developments. Ivory. Look. Look. At these places where they're raising children. I can't say anything because I was raised in one of these places. As children, we thought this was normal. As children, we thought roaches were normal. Everyone had them. As children, we thought beatings were normal. Everyone got them. As children, we thought being at home alone while your parents left was normal. This is an apartment complex that looked like it's falling down, like London Bridge. Jonathan, Malia's mom brought activist Quanell X with her to speak with Sheets reporters today windows. right here outside of her apartment. And he tells us that the neighbor surveillance camera right there above the home Jesus. shows chilling video of Malia's stepdad after Malia's mom. They got surveillance footage. Mom had left town last week. It captures the stepdad. Now that skinny man was with that big old woman that was shaped like grimace and this little woman right here just <sighs> coming out of the apartment with a bottle of Clorox. that skinny man was with that fat woman reminds you of a youtuber i know when you living in a rundown place and you work and he don't reminds you of a youtuber i know I'm not, I don't, I, I don't know if you guys might watch YouTube that much. Just reminds me of a little skinny guy with a big old fat woman. Well, it reminds me of a few little skinny guys with big old fat woman, fat women. Doesn't it? Right, uh, Skohar. There's a few of them like that, isn't it? <clears throat> what do they say when they meet these big old fat women? What up, though? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. A laundry basket and inside the laundry basket, a garbage bag. Malia's mom, Brittany Bowens, deferring all questions to Quanell. Quanell says Brittany told him key it's details today woman. that she has not shared with Houston police about the stepfather, Darian Vence, abusing Malia. He confronted her and threatened her that she better not do it. And so she helped him shield the truth of that abuse of Malia. And so now Malia is dead. You hear this shit? That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Women get to be victims in every situation. Do you hear this? She knew about it. Bet not. Yes. When your spokesman speaks fluent Ebonics, but not English, bet not. Bet not. So you covered it up and now the child is dead and we're supposed to feel sorry for you. And you got all these people that's going around feeling sorry for this mother. Now, which one of the, let me ask y'all something. Which one should get at least a little bit sympathy? The man who left his kid in the car while he tried to work to put food on his kid's table 
or the woman who knew that her child was being molested and, and, and abused by this man, whatever the charge is, she knew it and she hid it because her fat ass was scared of that skinny ass man. Now all of a sudden black women are victims. Now all of a sudden black women too damn weak to speak up when you can't stop them bitches from talking. Who believes this? That that fat bitch, well, we kind of see it on YouTube though. So maybe there's something in it. From doctors. And new details about an explosive fight the couple had as Brittany was leaving for Massachusetts for her dad's funeral. And that fight was about... Brittany, let me see if I can get your name correct. And I hope you see it and I hope your family see it. And I hope everybody that know you see it. Brittany Bowens, you ain't shit. You are a piece of shit, Brittany Bowens. You knew this man had been abusing your kid and you left the state to go to your father's funeral, but you didn't take your own fucking kid. You left her with the man who had been abusing her. You dirty, nasty, disgusting bitch. Anybody that know that motherfucker, go on and play it in front of her. Fuck you, Brittany Bowens. The person who needs to be dead is you. No one else but you. You nasty bitch. She had caught him sending naked penis pictures to another man and she confronted him about being gay. She caught him sending naked penis pictures to another man and she confronted him about being gay. Brittany tells Fox 26 Darian had proposed to her a few weeks ago on the way to Massachusetts. She called off the engagement. She told him. So he wasn't even a stepfather. He was a boyfriend. So they want to put, give this misleading ass title. Mom of missing four year old makes allegations about the stepdad is what it says, but he's not the stepdad. They weren't even married and she left the kid with him and nobody's pointing out that she's a piece of shit. That she was giving back his ring and that she was not going to marry him. So, and I believe. So you told the man you give him back his ring, you're not gonna marry him, but you can keep my damn kid while I go to another state. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That caused him to snap. Quanell says Malia's mom has now agreed to tell police the truth about Darian. She made some serious mistakes, but it's time for the mother for the mother to do better and be forthright and honest about everything she knows. It's sad that you have you have had women who seek the desire to be loved so bad that they will even protect a rotten man. Thank you, Quanell, for saying that. These fat bitches are so desperate. Let's call it what it is. Fat bitches are desperate than a motherfucker. Black chicks are desperate for dick that they will sit up there and forego their kid. Fuck their kid. I want dick. Niggly moms choose dick. And Malia's mom is at the police station right now, finally being transparent with detectives, according to Quanell X. And he made a call out today for Darian Vence to turn himself into police. Police have not called Vence a suspect, only a person of interest. They did say they have not been able to get a hold of him all week. Police also told us they are not confirming any of the new information that Quanell X shared today, but we did talk to the owner of that surveillance video and he says he has turned that video into police. We're live in Southwest Houston. Ivory Hecker, Fox 26 News. Y'all wonder why I talk so much shit about fat bitches. They just sit around just being with niggas because they need one. And I understand dick must be good apparently and you want dick. I get it. But, but come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, but there's more to this story, guys. There's more to this story. Did y'all know this little girl has a history of being removed from the home and being involved with CPS? Yes, sir. Let's get into that. As I was motherfucking reading, I'm seeing right now, and you guys see it on your screen now. I'm not making this shit up. 
Child Protective Services, or CPS, has confirmed that the missing Malia Davis, who's four years old, and her two brothers, five and one, were removed from their mother, Brittany Bowen's care, on August of 2018 by CPS. According to CPS, the removal was due to allegations of physical abuse related to Malia's head injury, which required several brain surgeries. Oh, God. Let's break some news. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TNN News. Your host, Tom News. Apparently, somebody, people like fucking fat bitches because this fat bitch got three kids, not one. Not two, but three, a five, a four, and a one-year-old. And none of them by the nigga she let stay in her house. None of them by the nigga she let stay in her house. You had a fresh-ass baby. <sighs> CPS reported that they would also go once a month to check on the family to ensure everything is okay. It is uncertain if criminal charges were being filed against anyone as a result of the investigation. CPS is working with law enforcement. An Amber Alert was issued for the girl and... His bond apparently was reduced from 999999 dollars to $45,000. This is some stupid shit. They up here talking about she missing. Y'all know she ain't missing. Y'all know where that girl is. Y'all know she dead. And y'all know who she was dealing with. That, that that nasty nigga you let in your house, you fat bitch. Let's get to the story. Of course, they're probably going to be a commercial jump to fuck up, so we can shut that off for a second. And so we got 30 seconds, but let's talk about it a little, little bit. Apparently, this is the, the mom right here. So let me go on and take a picture of this 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 bitch. Um, I, just, I just don't know um, why it's a thing. Why it's a thing that you would have a mother... What? And all these people are searching for this kid and the mom knows more than she's saying. And that's what makes it sad. This is the second case, or no, not second case. This is one of many cases I've done where the mothers were protecting the perpetrators. Natasha, thanks so much. And we have learned Malia's family has a history with Child Protective Services. This nigga's green screen is worse than mine. Or CPS. In August, CPS removed four-year-old Malia from the home along with her five-year-old and one-year-old brother. CPS says it was due to allegations of physical abuse related to Malia's head injury, which required several brain surgeries. She and her brothers were returned to the home in February. CPS would check on the family we've learned once a month. We're continuing to follow more about that specific case with CPS. And Fox 26 is committed to bringing you the very latest in this story. We, of course, will bring you any new developments as it becomes available online and here on air. So well, let me get it straight. Fox 26. What? Fuck that. Let me get it straight. They gave the kids right back. Oh, whoa, the GoFundMe. Where's Just Jay at? Is Just Jay in there? Just Jay, y'all did this story? I know what I can do. I know what the fuck I'm about to do. Is DJ Just Jay in there? Hold on a second. What up, young man? Hey, what up, Tommy? This is DJ Just J. Hey, you know what I'm about to do? I'm gonna call you in so I can bring you in on on the on the phone line. Hold on a second, let me make sure it pulls it up. Why is it not coming up that way? Huh? Hold on a second. I'll find it. Give me give me two seconds because I I was trying to call you. That's what I was reaching over messing with these buttons. I was trying to call you in. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Cause it's, it's, it's playing with me.
Ah, I got it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to hang up and call you right back. Yes, sir. All right. Y'all, yeah, I'm about to go live with my man DJ Just J to get his uh, uh, his thoughts on this because he knows more of the story of mine. And apparently over in um, over on the Soto You Dig, they did this story. What up, Jay? All right, how's, all right, how's that? That's perfect. Okay, this is the thing. And you are 100% right. And, and usually whenever I do these stories, like I try to make a judgment call based on how I think the person is. And... So far, we've been right, and I called out and I said that Brittany Bowens is a shitty mom, and everything that you just said, even though you, you're just now kind of diving into the story, you are 100% correct. Spot on. Okay, um, tell me, what is it that, like, the idea that these people knew, uh, that, that she knew all of this stuff, and that defects and all of these other people, CPS, knew this was going on and they still gave her the children. Can you tell me why it is that these women are able to get their children back even after such egregious things are happening around them? That's the part that's a little bit confusing because this is not the first, second, third, 15th or 30th story that we've, that we've looked at where CPS has came and investigated. Like you've heard stories about like uh, one of the ones I really, really love is the Anaya Day Garrett case. I always use her as an example where the father wasn't able to get custody of the kid until he had to go to a uh, custody court. And four days before he was supposed to go to court because they were look he was looking at winning his court case to gain custody of his daughter, the mom and the boyfriend just decided to kill the little girl and killed her at four years old. So what you have going on with this particular case is um, – CPS came in and did multiple investigations, and they deemed that these people aren't suitable to be parents. CPS took them out of the custody of Brittany Bowens and and the uh, and the uh, and the boyfriend. And it's not the fiance; it's, it's definitely the boyfriend because they are not married. <laughs> they took all three kids and put them with a relative. I think I want to say it was like a um, an auntie or something like that. So they had custody of them. So what Brittany and the boyfriend had to do was they had to take parenting classes and they had to successfully pass the parenting classes. And I think they did that for like six straight months. Then they turn around and once they completed the classes, gave them the kids back with no questions asked. God, dog. Now, because originally the reason why they took the little girl was because she had suffered a head injury. I don't think you got to that part just yet in the story. No, so if you can help us out, just go ahead and tell it. I haven't gotten there yet. So what you know is is what we'll know. And ladies and gentlemen, this is my man, DJ Just J. You can find him over on the Soto Podcast. It's on the screen. Go ahead and talk about it. Yeah, represent Soto Nation, man. Represent the platform, man. We're just trying to build and keep Soto Nation popping, man. But um, what happened was there was, there was a claim that the mom said that the little girl suffered a fall and hit her head so hard that she ended up having to have brain surgery. Multiple. Yes. She had to have multiple surgeries to fix this brain injury that she had from a so-called fall. But what we believe happened was that this little girl was beat up more than likely by the, uh, the boyfriend. The so boyfriend or the mom, because, the, well, well, think about it I'm this sorry? way, Jay. Think about how many times we've heard of these cases where the mom tried to act like she had nothing to do with it, and then you come to find out the mom was intimate in what was going on. Because I maybe you can explain this to me. How is it that you can tell the boyfriend you don't want to marry him, you give his ring back, but you leave him with your kid while you go to your father's funeral? Why wouldn't you take your child to your father's funeral? Why wouldn't you skip the fucking funeral if this man is that bad? Something's not right. I agree. I agree with you, bro. And that was some of the things that we kept looking at as we kept going. Like, wait a minute, does that make any sense? Because we've actually done um, a few stories where um, there was a mother. Oh, excuse me. It was the mother that got that got shot and killed. I'm trying to remember. Bro, we've done so many of them. Mm -hmm. But she had broke up with the guy and then she went to work. And the dude killed all of the kids because she left the kid. It was the dude from New Orleans. The reason why I remember this is because a friend of mine in Oklahoma City used to work with him because he originally used to live in New Orleans. But when wow. they got flushed out, he was forced to find work in Oklahoma. Well, he ended up making his way back to Louisiana and got, and got with this woman. He was living off of her. And he basically didn't have anywhere to go. He had just lost his job. And here it is. He's in a relationship with her. She breaks up with him. And then um, 
the mom says, well, the grandmother, excuse me, the grandmother says, well, if you need me to come help, help, help you get him out of there, I'll come by there and help you get him out of that house. So the girlfriend was like, no, mom, I'm good. I'm good. I got it. So she ended up leaving, but he didn't have no place to go. So he just would stay there. And he ended up killing the kids, and now he's he's uh, he's in jail, and more than likely they're looking at um, a life sentence for him. But I'm talking about multiple, and, and, and what's funny, Tommy, this is multiple stories coming out of Houston. We did uh, this because this was in Sugarland, but Sugarland, you ought to know this because we've been to Houston. Mm-hmm. Sugarland is very very close to Houston. Yes, it's like a Katie, suburb Texas, of Houston. Right? Yeah, Katy, Texas, Sugarland, Houston, all within basically the same area. That's all just this month. <laughs> and, and Houston, and, and I've been doing stories too. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, this is my man, DJ Just J. Make sure you guys go and subscribe to the Soto Podcast. Join him. He he does the deep stories. He talks to talks to you about the, a lot of the things that we, break, we brush over. He talks about them in depth and comes up with the stories. And half the time, he'll get in contact with motherfuckers who have something to do with the story. So go over there and check him out. I want to ask you this thing, because I've done some things about Houston too. It seems like... A lot of these places, inner cities in particular, that do not take um, charge in taking care of the children. It's almost like, you know, when I talked earlier about the mental health facilities in the United States. Well, I think the CPS and the child agencies are really not there with the the children with their best interest in mind. That is correct. They are not because CPS is failing these kids all the way around. But so we try to look at this from two different directions. Is the state and the government failing these kids? Yes, they are. Because in a lot of cases, what you have going on, especially in Cuyahoga County, for, your, for those of y'all that are familiar with Ohio, <clears throat> excuse me, is the fact that they are notorious right now for failing these children, either failing to take the kids out of the house or failing to get these kids with a safe home to the point to where they're being sued, like, like just left and right for, the, for these different things that they're doing. But this is a, a, another way that you can look at it. I ask people, I'm like, is it CPS's job in order to take care of these kids? Is it the government's job? Is it the president's job? Is it is it the police's job to take care of these children and to look out for their best interest and well-being? And I always tell them it is the mother and father's responsibility. That is their responsibility laid on their shoulders. Whoever you lay down and procreate with, y'all responsibility to take care of that kid it's not up to the state to make sure that that kid has everything that they need so everything around these kids is failing them Mm -hmm. yo and and the sad part about it is that we know it we see it many of us were a part of that that's why i was talking about the kid being left in the car why is it in in uh, or do you notice like the man who left the kid in the car he will get no sympathy but this woman That's who correct. left this kid with what she claimed is a violent person is getting sympathy. And and I heard that you guys did something to the, because I don't know, that there was actually a GoFundMe set up. Maybe you can uh, enlighten us on that as well. Well, I'll just tell you, because if Brittany Bowens want to sue me, I ain't, I ain't that far from Houston, so had, had, handle, handle your business. <laughs> but I was the one that was responsible for taking that GoFundMe down. So you guys in the chat, y'all ain't got to speak on it. I'm going to take the blame for that because I looked at that and I said, there's a couple things here. The GoFundMe collection was being asked for $25,000. And I'm like, $25,000 for what? Because I don't mind people asking, but you also have to take an extended look and look at these things and say, okay, crowdfunding is public. So it is all right to be able to look at these GoFundMes and judge them and say, should we be contributing to this or not? That's what crowdfunding is. It's not insurance. And I keep telling people that you've been telling us for the longest time that we need to have insurance. So that's one of the things that I harp on. This does not qualify as insurance. So I looked at this and I said, and I read the note and it said that we're collecting this money so we can give this money to the mom to help them find the kid. And I said, wait a minute, what? To help find the kid? First and foremost, Sugarland police are looking for this kid. Houston police, because it's within the area of Houston, is on the case now because they're looking for the kid. And then you have Texas EquiSearch that is also looking for the kid. So you have at least three entities that are already being paid to look for this kid. So if you're going to send her $25,000 damn dollars, then what the hell is that money going to pay to do what to find who? Mm-hmm. 
And I said, that don't even sound right. Like, people need to just stop dumping money in this stuff just because you hear a sob story. And it don't even really take that much to look at it and see, oh, wait, they already have tons of search crews out there looking for this little girl. 20, matter of fact, Tommy, to make it worse, there were actually two GoFundMes. No. <laughs> there were two. What was the second one asking for? I don't remember what the second was asking for because it collected $25, $25 total and it got shut down. Okay, the first but one, how much, had they, of, how much had they gotten with the first one before it got shut down? The first one was uh, was $25. That was the very first link that I saw. And then I went and found the actual one that you may or may not be able to find, which that one was asking for $25,000. But what was funny, up until the last time I checked, like a day or two ago, it still collected zero, but I don't know if that was because I flagged it or what. I don't know, okay, but well it still had collected no money. Well, that's good. Why do you, why do you think these mothers, and I know I keep asking you to get into the mindset, but I, I like to argue the mindset of people and see what other people think, because right now we have people who are asking these questions too. So we understand we're just give, we're just giving our thoughts, but I want to ask you, and this is my man, DJ Just Jay from the Soto Podcast. Make sure you go over there and check him out. Why do you think the mentality of these women is as soon as a tragedy happens to their kids, they start asking for money? Because I don't think, you and I are both fathers. I don't think the yes, first sir. thing I could do, when my grandmother died, I didn't ask y'all for no money. I didn't say anything like that. We we paid for it. The funeral was done. It was over with. Like, it wasn't a I thing. Believe. But that's my grandmother. A ch my child, though, I just can't see myself doing it. But these mothers go straight into asking for money mode at their child's death. Why? Well, this is the thing. Because I always say you have to wonder where a person's heart is. So when you just pointed that out, you say, hey, man, I just lost somebody that was near and dear to me. Your mind and your thoughts were about that person. Your mind and your thoughts were about the memories, the laughs, the crying, the moments where that person made you think. You know what I'm saying? So money would have been the last thing on your yep. mind because that person was significant to you in an emotional way. Uh, we, we have a saying on the Soto Podcast where we say, Hashtag babies for benefits. And a person would ask, well, why do we say that? Because it seems like these mothers only have these children for the benefits that they can collect from them. So in a sense, every, the reason that they had these kids was for money. So it would seem that if the death of these kids occurs, their very first thing would be to try to collect money. Well, how are we going to get this money? We're going to set up a GoFundMe. We're going to set up a Facebook funding campaign. We're going to turn around and... And um, like you know how they how they have the um, the uh, the burial like 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 they they give out some type of burial um, stipends or something like that in yep. some areas you know what I mean to like cover some of the burials especially like in tragedies and stuff like that so their number one focus and, and what's so funny about that is when we've actually called people out for what we believe to be abusing people's goodwill by using this crowdfunding like GoFundMe. We've actually had people in the comment section get out there and say, well, this person just lost their kid. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, they ought to be able to just get money and this and that, such and such. And I'm like, no. As a matter of fact, they're just like, well, how, how do you know how much the medical bills are going to be? The medical bills are probably astronomical. And I'm just like, well, okay, then why don't you find out what the final tally is and then ask for the money so you can know exactly how much you would like to ask for. Amen. As hey, opposed uh, to just... Asking people to just write a blind check. I think that's insane and it's irresponsible. Yes, and I don't know if you're looking at the screen or not, but right now I'm showing them photos of that little girl. And one of the photos yes, included sir. the stepfather in the photo. So the mom is now trying to claim he did these things, but she kept him around anyway. And no, then no, 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 taking no, no. these pictures they, and putting them on Instagram. Where, where, the little girl, where the little girl had the swollen face, that was the actual father. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Father. That's the actual father there. That's the biological father, and what's messed up, and he seems to be a really good dude, man. Has he spoken I out? His huh? Has he spoken out? Yes, he has. And I watched him speak, and I listened to him, and he said, "You know, I don't want to. I don't want to hear from. Like, I don't. I don't want to talk about anything. I like. I don't want to hear from the police. I don't want to hear from the courts." I want to talk to the person that is responsible for my daughter missing. He, he said the only person that needs to be giving me answers right now is is the uh, is the dude they keep calling the stepfather. And I was like, I already know what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I already know what he's saying. That's his baby. So the pictures you're showing on the screen, that's a a little snippet of the father. The actual How the hell father. is that a fall injury? 
Her entire her it's not, bro. man. It's not, bro. It's not. It's just like it's just like the story that we did in Houston that wasn't really that long ago, where the woman was blaming her kid's death, the fact that she fell two stories from her apartment building, to come to find out she had been beating her daughter so much so that it ended up killing her daughter. Jesus. That was out of Houston also. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is my man, DJ Just J. He came in to give us a lot of stuff that we did not know. He apparently already did this story. You guys go over there and check it out on the Soto Podcast as he has more information about this than I know. I'm going to get one last word from you. Um... Do you think, because I'm with you, I said, well, we don't require the state to be a part of these people's decision making when they have the kid. But yet when stuff like this, we look at the state first instead of the parents, either we're going to let parents be parents and blame them for what happens, or we're going to let them just uh, go to the state and let the state handle them either way, but need to make up your mind, not have your cake and eat it too. When it comes to these children out there right now. What would you say to fathers as you and I are fathers and our kids aren't in the home with us all the time? What would you say to fathers as far as being diligent of what's going on at the mother's home? This is this is one thing I can say because I actually <laughs> am having to go through it two times over. So I, I, I get it. I'm sure you can understand some of these mm-hmm. sentiments. One of the things that you have to make sure of to all the fathers that are listening out there is you have to handle these situations very delicately and understand that you're not just dealing with some woman you just slept with that maybe pissed you off and, and maybe you just don't like her for whatever reason. That person has someone that you've helped create. They have a life at their disposal, and you have to be very, very cautious about how you deal with that person, and you want to make sure and do what's best in the best interest to make sure that that person doesn't hurt your kid And number two, if you get an opportunity to not only get shared visitation or get flat out custody, I say go for it. Let me tell you something else too. See if you agree. We have to be diligent. The nigga, my mom, my, my daughter's mom and dating. I met this nigga, know this nigga name, did some Googling. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell y'all to your face. I know his mama met his mama. But the one thing I have with my daughter, and I made sure that we had this from the time she was growing up with her mother, we have an open door policy. If I do something that she feels uncomfortable, she can go tell her mom. If her mother does something that makes her feel uncomfortable, she can come tell me. She has an open door top policy. She can speak and we teach her to speak and we teach her like T.I. If you see it, tell it. 1-800, I'm telling. (laughs) 1-900, I'm telling. And my daughter is telling shit. Say something, say something. (laughs) Yeah, see something, say something. That's my daughter was raised under the snitch rule. Do you do the same? Absolutely. And and that's the thing because it helps when you've been able to develop that bond. I was I was fortunate enough to develop that bond from the time that my baby literally took her first breath into this world. Daddy Mm -hmm. cut the umbilical cord. Daddy was the first person to give her a bottle. Daddy was the first person in the warming room. So when people got a chance to see my, me and my daughter on video and they're just like, oh, wow, man, you guys' relationship is so cool. I'm just like, man, you're talking about years and years of being in my baby's life and talking to her. And one thing that I learned from my parents is, you know, you know me, me and you are kind of old school. You might have heard this before. Kids are to be seen and not heard. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things that I've been trying to change the narrative and get people to understand that that's actually kind of harmful to the development of the kids. So what I've always done with my daughter is I always encourage her to make her own decisions. And what I want to do is let you know that there's a fork in the road, let you know what consequences lie on both sides. The choice is yours. And I want to enable my child to, to, to know that she has the power of choice to live her own life and make her own decisions because daddy can't live your life for you. You have to live your life but understand that you can trust me and keep that line of communication open that if you ever have a concern or a question or anything, yes. you can talk to me. Very important. Yeah. I teach my daughter and I don't know if you do it cause our kids are about the same age. One of the things that I teach her is your decisions have consequences. So I allow her to make decisions and allow her to deal with the consequences because when you get out of this house, I'm not going to be able to save you from the consequences of your decision making. And the last thing a child needs is to be able to now have consequences at 19, but not consequences at nine. No, I better teach them and allow them to make those damn uh, decisions and live with them. 
One hundred percent agree, brother. Um, so we we on the we on the same page. We're on the same page. I mean, just as easy as you can learn from me, I learn from you. You know, I listen to you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, I, I think it's a beautiful thing to empower your children. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Hey, man, thank you for calling in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's my man, DJ Just J over at the Soto Podcast. And you also, he has his own YouTube channel. Let them know what channel that is, where they can find you at, and what times you typically broadcast. Well, um, like I say, um, I, I host the uh, the Soto Podcast. Like I say, you guys know, or a lot of people should know, that we advocate for children first. So we primarily spend a focus on talking about those particular stories. So we spend a bit more time. It takes a little bit longer. But it, it's really worth it to listen to it, you know, to not only get an understanding of the story, but kind of the direction that we want to go as far as getting people's mindset in the right direction. And then my personal page is just, you know, my personal page, if you want to follow it. I don't put a lot of music content on my uh, DJ Just JLK uh, YouTube page, but it's there, though. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to um, thank you for being a part of the show. And I want you all to give... Uh give uh kudos to just jay because he's one of the few people who i've seen take what what they have and run with it uh i've watched you evolve and i want to give you uh credit publicly i've watched you evolve into like someone i enjoy speaking to a lot like on cases like this because you seem like you're impassioned you seem like there's emotion involved in it and i've watched you just grow into i know you said at first when we we first started this idea you were like well i don't really do much like that in public but i'll i'll try i'll give my hand at it and right now you are one of the voices i will tell you that you are one of the voices you are one person who i listen to who are is very refined and you are a a um an example of someone who said i want to do this and did it yeah absolutely man like i said i could always take something and and, and make it work and turn it into something but but like i said my passion has always been kids you know i, I um, spent some time being a youth counselor so that's that's definitely where my heart is man i love kids absolutely love kids mm-hmm so if you guys want to hear somebody yeah, not thank, cussing thank you out you every so five, much, man. I appreciate the yeah. compliment. No, I just want them to know if y'all want to hear somebody not cussing you out and screaming every motherfucking five minutes. There you go. <laughs> you go for the chest check. Somebody not singing every five fucking minutes. Go to Just J if you want to hear, because I know a lot of y'all say, well, I'm tired of that shit, this laughing and all that stuff, all this cussing. Well, let me tell you something. You want to deal with the news in a professional way and a man who really cares about what he's talking about and has a passion for it and brings you that, that's DJ Just J. So guys, make sure y'all go over there and subscribe to him, follow him on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere where you can find him. That's my dog. Brother, I love you, man. I love you too, Tommy. And tell these people, man, to stop saying that you ain't put nobody on. I'm like, they must have forgot about me over here. I'm just saying, it ain't like you didn't give me an opportunity. They need to stop saying that. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to my brother, Relationship Rehab, all of Soto Nation, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, man. That was my man, DJ Just Jay, came in and joined us to give us more information about this horrific story. And it, it is nothing short of horrific. Call it whatever you want to. This story is nothing short of horrific. I knew nothing about it. And I guess somebody who had seen it on his show told me about it, this Malia Davis. I'd never heard of it.